before we get started, I'd like to go over a few items, specifically on our webinar reminders. All attendees are muted, so during the open forum later, kindly utilize the Q&A button found at the bottom of your screens for your questions, and I and Jarek will be reading them for you. Due to time constraints, however, we may not be able to raise all your questions, but what can we do, Jarek? We will collate and send them to our guest speaker for her to answer after the webinar, and we will try our best to get them back to you. I will also like to remind everyone to please remain until the end of the event, as we will be posting the evaluation link by that time. After submitting the evaluation form, an email will be sent to you containing your certificate of participation. Thank you. As it is said, the only thing that remains constant in this world is change. And the only way to cope with the vicissitudes of human experiences and continue efficiently with life is through adaptation. A pleasant day to everyone. Again, we are your hosts for today. I am Jarek Aloro. And I am Isabel Viaje. We welcome you to this webinar entitled The Roy Adaptation Model and uses in nursing practice and research. In the very first year of our journey in the College of Nursing as nursing students, we were introduced to various nursing theorists, their respective suppositions and philosophies on how nursing care should be administered. Since then, they became part of our lives and practice. Undeniably, one of the most important and commonly utilized nursing theory is Roy's adaptation model. Don't you agree, Belle? Of course, I definitely agree with you, Jarek. From theoretical frameworks in research down to its integration in the care of our patients, this theory has always emphasized the person's capacity to adapt with the never-ending changes in his or her environment. And today, I would say we are indeed blessed to be able to hear from this theorist proponent firsthand. I can't wait to hear from her. And I am sure that everyone here is as excited as us. But before we proceed, it is but right and just that we start this endeavor with a prayer and ask for the guidance of our Almighty Father. At this juncture, may we request everyone to be in a mode of silence as we come before the Lord's presence through our opening prayer. Thereafter, we will be singing the Philippine National Anthem. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let me be the change I want to see.
I hope you're all comfortable in your respective places. I heard that we have a lot of guests today. Currently, we are 979 in the Zoom room, and we also have more than 700, 700 sorry, attendees watching through Facebook Live via the USLS College of Nursing NRS page. Wow, it is fascinating to be surrounded by such a large audience with participants coming from different parts of the country as well as abroad. Indeed, Jarek. So not only that, our crowd is also composed of individuals in different stages of their nursing practice. So we have from student nurses to registered nurses to masters and doctors of the nursing field. And of course, our esteemed guest, a nursing theorist all the way from Los Angeles, California. Not only that, we are also graced with the presence of several other nursing theorists, namely Dr. Ann Boykin, Dr. Savina Schoenhofer, and Dr. Rosanna Loxin. Hence, we would like to acknowledge all of you, our honored guests, namely our esteemed nursing theorists, members of the PRC Board of Nursing, Association of Deans of Philippine Colleges of Nursing, College of Nursing Administrators, Registered Nurses, Doctoral and Masteral Nursing Students, Clinical Instructors, BSN Students, and to all the viewers of this broadcast, welcome to this webinar. We would also like to recognize the hardworking administrators and event coordinators of the University of St. LaSalle College of Nursing. Thank you very much for spearheading this momentous event. And of course, we hail the presence of our admired guest who will be formally introduced in a short while. So I know we're all thrilled to meet her, but before that, let us hear first from the University of St. LaSalle, President and Chancellor, Brother Joaquin Severino Martinez, FSC Demon, as he gives his welcome remarks. Let us give him a round of virtual applause. Good morning, everyone. It's such a pleasure to begin the week with an outstanding opportunity for everyone to know what is happening, to understand our role in what is happening, and to respond accordingly to what is happening. The pandemic has brought so many uncertainties in the life of our people, of our country, and of the world. We welcome in a very special way and thank in a very special way our speakers, Sister Kalista Roy, 
for her generosity and hospitality in sharing today the Roy adaptation model. Many of our nursing educators, nursing practitioners, and nursing students and administrators are all in many ways up to their neck, maybe even beyond the neck, in coping up with the various challenges in nursing education today, let alone figuring out once we graduate our nurses, what they will do exactly in their chosen fields of endeavor, whether in hospitals, nursing homes, and other therapeutic way, uh, venues in which they will practice nursing. But since we are in education, LaSalle is an, from the very beginning dedicated to educating everyone. We are very pleased that today we are fulfilling that mission through the partnership with Sister Calista Roy and all the all other panelists who are present today. Because we all know and understand that the challenges that we meet today can only be met if we come together, if we share our wisdom, our sense of mission, our compassion and understanding on how best to respond to the day's experience of sickness, experience of deficiency, illness, in whatever way we would like to look at the imbalance of life and the imbalance that we experience. So do join us, embark on another initiative that we will hopefully find, that you will hopefully find to be most useful and helpful. Uh, here in the far away island of Negros, we understand that we are now reaching out to many other islands and that's such the technology I hope will continue in of building bridges, of building understanding, cooperation, and better health for everyone. Thank you very much for joining us and may God continue to bless us and keep us safe so that we may sustain the mission that he has entrusted to all of us. Thank you, sister. And thank you to all the participants and nursing administrators, educators gathered together. Do not lose hope. The light that we want to see, which is the light to end this pandemic is already here because we have believe, we believe that the nurses, the nurses have contributed to strengthening and providing that light to many of our people and of our world by their competency, by their proficiency and their compassion for all who are sick and all those who are getting well. Thank you very much and good day to all. Thank you very much for that heartwarming welcome brother. At this point, let us call on Dr. Shaila M. Trahera, Center Link Central Linkages and International Affairs Director, to formally introduce to us our esteemed guest speaker. Good morning. Today's webinar speaker is a sister of St. Joseph of Carondelet for over 60 years. Her education began with a Bachelor of Arts degree with a major in nursing at Mount St. Mary College, Los Angeles, followed by master's degrees in pediatric nursing and sociology at the University of California, Los Angeles, and a PhD in sociology at the same school. Her postdoctoral studies were in neuroscience nursing at University of California at San Francisco. She is highly respected nurse theorist, known for her development and continual updating of the Roy Adaptation Model, a widely used framework for theory, practice, and research in nursing. 
Books on the model have been translated into many languages, and the model is cited extensively in scholarly books and peer-reviewed journals worldwide. She has chaired and served on numerous postdoctoral dissertation committees. She was inducted into the American Academy of Nursing in 1978 and honored as a living legend in 2007. Other awards received were for her contributions to advancing nursing science with the National League for National Nursing Martha Rogers Award and the Sigma Theta Tau International Honor Society for Nursing Founders Award. An inaugural inductee into the Nurse Research Hall of Fame of Sigma Theta Tau International, Dr. Roy, has also received six honorary doctoral degrees. In 2021, she received a Lifetime Achievement Award from Sigma Theta Tau International for the global impact of her work. Further, she is a professor emeritus at Mount St. Mary's University, Los Angeles, and at the Connell School of Nursing, Boston College. Ladies and gentlemen, webinar guests, colleagues, and global nurses, let us all welcome an authentic nurse icon with a virtual hand of applause, Sister Kalista Roy, PhD RN fan. Greetings to all across uh, many time zones. Mm -hmm. Thank you uh, to President Brother Kenneth and Dr. Tahara for your warm welcome and introduction. And also to the webinar co-hosts. And I'm very interested in hearing about uh, the people who will be responders. So I thank them as well. And I appreciate so much the invitation from St. LaSalle University to share my work with nurses, as said, of all levels and student nurses in your wonderful country and those who have joined uh, from other places. I'm going to take time now to share my, get my slides up and share the screen.
The title of my presentation is uh, the Roy Adaptation Model and Uses in Practice and Research. And with so many of you at all different levels, I'm sure you'll and hopeful that you will find something within this that is uh, useful to you. To start out, I want to just take a moment to focus on nursing knowledge. In talking about knowledge, uh, particularly for nursing, our profession uses specialized knowledge to provide a service to society. And nursing is a profession. Therefore, nursing uses specialized knowledge. And specialized knowledge in nursing is based on the goal of nursing, philosophies and theories to reach practice goals and research that derives and tests theories. Danny Willis and colleagues uh, looked at all of the nursing literature a few years ago and summarized that the goal of nursing is facilitating humanization, meaning, choice, quality of life, and living, healing in living and dying. A philosopher once said that if problems constitute the questions of science, it is the theories that constitute the answers. Theory asks, acts as a global positioning system. It focuses our efforts. It guides the development of knowledge and the discipline and responds to health needs in society. This is what I call a nursing knowledge development tree. So it starts out at the top with uh, the goals of nursing, humanization, meaning, choice, quality of life, healing in living and dying. So if you take the overall goal, then under that, there are many ways to reach that goal. So there are grand theories and there may be any number of them and several are represented today. Then out of the grand theories, we can develop middle range theories, the concepts that are put together. And out of those, we develop practice theories. So theory comes at many levels and the Roy model is just one of these grand theories. So why and how did I ever develop a theory? Well, I was a master's student at the University of California in Los Angeles, and I was extremely fortunate because Dorothy E. Johnson was the teacher of my class. And uh, she talked about the real importance of defining the goal of nursing. At that time, many, many years ago, nursing was beginning to move in, in the United States rapidly into higher education from diploma hospital schools to university education. But she said to do this, we had to have our own body of knowledge. And that would be based on understanding what nursing was trying to accomplish, the goal. Well, strangely enough, I had read a very brief description that summer about nursing, at, about adaptation. And I said to myself, I think that's what nursing is all about. So I just boldly, I was very young, and I just said, the goal of nursing is to promote adaptation. And Dorothy Johnson said to me, what do you mean by that? So I, this began my whole lifelong journey to describe and explain people and groups as adaptive systems and nursing as promoting adaptation. Now our model based beliefs and concepts help us because the concepts of can be related 
and become propositions. And those propositions can direct questions for research. The conceptual definitions also can be used to select measurement instruments. So let's begin then specifically to talk about the Roy model. And I'll begin with the philosophical assumptions. I came up with the idea of veritivity as a specific way of describing humanization. The Latin word veritas means truth that is one. So that's, I was trying to come up with this common focus. So I talk about the common purposefulness of people and the earth, the unity of all persons and the environment but still an incredible diversity, the same way that nature has common patterns and yet immense differences. There is diversity among people and cultures as there is in nature. And each entity, each individual person has a self-identity, the significance of which each person then brings to society. The scientific assumptions of the model for the 21st century can be described as the following. Systems of matter and energy progress to higher levels of complex self-organization. Consciousness and meaning are constitutive of person and environment integration. And integration of human and environment meanings results in adaptation. The cultural assumptions are that experiences within a specific culture will influence how each element of the Roy model is expressed, for example, in practice, education, and research. And within a culture, there may be a concept that is central to the culture that will influence some or all the elements of the Roy model to a greater or lesser extent. I remember thinking about uh, visiting in Japan and the family is more important than the individual person. So perhaps in teaching the model, I would begin with a role function and talk about families before I would talk about the self-concept. The concepts of the model then, uh, first of all, in talking about persons, summarizing the Roy model's view of persons, we have adaptive systems, four adaptive modes with processes for adaptation and internal coping processes. How did I come up with these uh, four adaptive modes? What I did was have the students collect samples of patient behavior. They each had tiny little slips of paper uh, and said, write, what, when the patient needed a nurse, describe what the patient was doing, what was going on. So I had these huge stacks and they were in all clinical areas. But I began to sort them. Today, we would call it a, con a content analysis. Uh, I could get the physiological ones off, but then I began to see that there were others that clustered together that related to the individual person. I call that self-concept. Another that related to what they did in life and who they related to uh, and what they did for other people. And I call that role function, but there was also relationships that were more specific and closer relations. And I call that interdependence. Now, going through these adaptive modes then, physiologic, uh, we finally, after many uh, students and nurses had used the model, we began to summarize it uh, to make the physiologic mode easier to understand. I divided it up into basic needs, oxygenation, nutrition, elimination, activity and rest and protection, and more complex physiological processes 
the senses, fluid and electrolytes, neurologic function, and endocrine function. The self-concept mode uh, from the beginning uh, uh, was seen as the basic need being psychic and spiritual integrity, and then defined as the composite of beliefs and feelings that one holds about oneself at a given time. And this is formed both by internal uh, perceptions. For example, every time I, when I would have to pull down a screen, I had to get somebody to reach it for me. I perceive I am short. <laughs> and, but it's also from the perceptions of others' reactions to you. So if people uh, treat you uh, as a nurse that has a lot of knowledge and you then see yourself as a person uh, worthy of respect. So the self-concept mode is this composite that comes from internally as well as externally. The role function mode then, the underlying need is for social integrity. This is the need to know who one is in relation to others. So you can act. You go to a new hospital, maybe you're in the cafeteria, and someone says, that's the head of nursing over there. And, but still, you know her role, but you don't know how to act yet. So they tell you, in the, here, we always call her by her first name, or we would never call her by our first name. So role function has to tell you how to act, give you clues about how to relate to other people. The last of the adaptive modes is interdependence. And the underlying need here is relational integrity. It focuses on interactions related to giving and receiving love, respect, and value. It includes all our significant others and support systems. It was one of my co-authors, Heather Andrews, who put this together in a, in a figure. So you have the physiologic mode, but at the uh, group level, it's called the physical. Then you have the self-concept mode at the group level called group identity then interdependence and role apply to both individuals and groups. The coping processes are in the middle. And uh, as we'll see in a moment, when we talk about environment, the stimuli come both internally and externally. And then the behavior is uh, both internal and external coming out of all of this. So environment then, relates to the notion of changing stimuli. Vocal is the most immediate confronting the person. Contextual and residual are the others. And we'll talk more about those in a moment. But on a, the group level, at the highest level, we can have a global and cosmic perspective as well. Health, then, is being and becoming whole and integrated. It requires coping with a changing environment. And uh, we assess it as either integrated, things are acting together, compensatory, we're trying to make it work, or compromise, what we're doing is not working. Nursing, then, is based on the philosophical and scientific and cultural assumption and focuses uh, on the goal to promote adaptation for individuals and groups. And it uses the nursing process. The adaptive modes then are a basis for clinical assessment and intervention at both the individual and group level they also are ways in which we develop scientific knowledge for practice. 
My first example of knowledge for effective practice is the individual level. And we'll look just at the neurologic function of the physiologic mode. So knowledge for practice uses empiric knowledge of the integrated processes of neurologic function. The personal knowing of the neuroscience nurse as well, who she is, what she knows, and who is committed to the nurse individual who is committed to promoting patient adaptation. So, for example, you might have a patient who has been in a motor vehicle accident and has increased blood pressure, a headache that is worsening, drowsiness and confusion, and difficulty thinking, and may have seizures. So the stimuli that have caused this or affected it are the motor vehicle accident and more specifically, the increased intracranial pressure. The nursing diagnosis then is a decreased level of consciousness due to signs of increased intracranial pressure. The goals then are general to uh, prevent to prevent secondary brain injury and complications of coma, but you can also think specifically. So within 30 minutes, uh, the cause of the increased intracranial pressure will be identified and steps taken to alleviate the pressure. The interventions, an open airway, adequate ventilation and circulation, observe and report sl even the slightest neurologic changes, a quiet environment, elevating the head of the bed 30 degrees with the head in alignment with the body and prevent sudden increases in pressure and minimize emotional and uh, physical trauma. A second example for effective practice uh, would be an at the individual level, the patient in the coronary uh, care unit. Here, the oxygenation uh, is at a compensatory level of adaptation. So we observe uh, the EGG for arrhythmias, check vital signs frequently, and assess effectiveness of the medications. We also look at other uh, physiologic needs, diet teaching, use of stool softeners, increased activity, protect against infection, and provide pain relief and a healing environment. The complex physiological processes we're observing for hypervolemia or hypovolemia. The physiologic mode long term would be behavior change for smoking when under stress, changes in diet, and changes in exercise patterns. The self concept mode the patient sees self as a healthy person with a lot of energy and unaware of a high risk for cardiac disease. The person keeps saying, it's hard to believe that I have a heart attack. In the role function mode, she likes her work and does not want to lose a competitive edge with her coworkers. She finds it difficult to integrate work and home commitments. Her daughter wants her mother at school and at play activities. Another example uh, of theory-based practice for an individual, in the Roy Model textbook 2009, uh, it starts out with the, this case study and then continues it throughout the book. Uh, it's a Robles family, Sylvia is two years old. She's a quadriplegic from an accident. Her mother cares for the family. The father has a good job. Her brothers are Luca, four years old, and Anthony, six years old. The maternal grandmother lives in the home, and there are two cousins who live in the area. For today's presentation, I'm adding a new episode five years later. 
Here's where the grandmother, Mrs. Canoza, 65 years old, awakens with weakness of the left arm and leg and seems not to see in the left visual field. Her daughter, Mrs. Robles, calls an ambulance to take her to the hospital and notifies her doctor. She is admitted directly to the hospital unit for evaluation. For the medical treatment, there is a diagnostic workup will include a brain MRI, neurologic consultation, history and physical, anticoagulant medications, fluids to maintain cerebral perfusion. Her primary nurse is Althea Baza, and uh, she prepares the patient for the diagnostic take, tests, does frequent uh, vital signs, assesses stroke risks, maintains the intravenous fluids, and provides medications as ordered. In addition, she does a complete nursing assessment based on the Roy adaptation model and plans based priority needs in the adaptive modes. She notes that uh, in terms of behavior, the patient is concerned that she'll be paralyzed after the stroke. The stimuli that are affecting this is that her granddaughter is paralyzed for five years. She does not understand the differences, spinal cord injury and various types of stroke. She says the family may, may not want her at home if she can't help with Sylvia, the child. The family has counted on her for help at times, and she's unsure of her role if not able to provide care. The nursing diagnosis then in terms of the self-concept, the physical self, she has an uncertainty about lack, about effective illness due to previous experience and lack of knowledge. So she knows something, but not enough. Her self-concept in terms of her personal self, uncertainty about who she is in the family without her usual role. The goals then would be, in general, to understand basic differences between spinal injury and kinds of stroke and potential for recovery. Specifically, Mrs. Canoza will state that she is glad to know there are differences between her illness and that of Sylvia's, and she's eager to learn more about it. The interventions, the nurse is a credible authority to assist Mrs. Canoza in interpretation of stimuli and re-evaluation of role. She provides social support by gaining trust and confidence of the patient through processes of reinterpreting her perceptions. She helps develop a new meaning in illness. The evaluation then is early in the nurse-patient relationship, Mrs. Canoza says she's glad to know there are differences in neuro conditions and she's eager to learn more about them. By the time she's preparing for more intensive rehabilitation, she's excited that she can be a partner with her granddaughter in ongoing rehabilitation. Mrs. Canoza feels she can help play with Sylvia even if she cannot feed her for a while. Mrs. Canoza has been reassured by the family that they love her for who for herself, and she's beginning to believe that this is true. Another example of theory-based practice is for the group. And an example might be a new, new graduate nurses joining the staff. Here, the goals just uh, to simplify the approach of the model, we would say the goals would be to socialize for role expectations. And then uh, the intervention would be mentoring and uh, role modeling. And secondly, the goal would be to integrate the roles of the new uh, graduates with the experienced uh, nurses. The, and here, uh, the interventions would relate to frequent individual and group discussion of responsibilities 
and expectations among all nurses on the unit. Now, moving to the next part of our uh, discussion today about the uses of the model, the use in developing nursing knowledge, theory and research go together to create knowledge. Theory provides understanding, research provides evidence. The, we had the opportunity uh, to have accumulated knowledge uh, to develop knowledge for practice because the common, there, the common concepts of the Roy adaptation model are used in research. And we were able to identify 500 research studies based on the Roy adaptation model. Then we could combine these findings from these studies, test the propositions, derive middle range theories, and define levels of readiness for use in practice, and use these findings of these studies to support as evidence, and then recommend changes in practice. So we have done two of these reviews, and the next one is in progress. First, we did tw the first 25 years of nursing research, and then we did the next 15 years. And the first book was published uh, by Sigma Theta Tau, and then the second one uh, by Springer. And uh, we found the adaptation model provides common concepts that are close to practice. And the concept across clinical areas because they're based on adapting people and groups that can be generalized. There's a large number of studies and multiple methods are used by researchers. Uh, and the basis within the nursing perspective, the goal of nursing as humanization. So this is a uh, slide that was done a few years ago uh, when after taking out duplicates, we had 429 studies and uh, they, they vary by years, how many years, uh, publications in given years. So this just gives you an idea, but they keep growing. And then uh, we were able to um, cluster the studies and develop middle range theories. And uh, this came from the second uh, series and the second publication. And uh, we have studies then that lead to a general middle range theory of coping, then one of adapting to life events, one of adapting to loss, adapting to chronic health conditions, and adaptation in family health. So as we uh, summarize, uh, as I, going back to the tree structure of nursing knowledge, what we have looked at briefly here uh, is the Roy adaptation model with the goal of nursing hum being humanization, meaning, choice, quality of life, healing and living and dying. With the Roy adaptation model then being able to develop middle range theory, that is adapting to life events, to loss, to chronic illness and family adaptation. And then we have some practice theories and, and one that's had a lot of attention is palliative theory in adapting to life events. And so at this time, I thank you all for your attention. I'm delighted you were here and I am very happy to take questions. So I will see if I can remove my screen. I think uh, I will let the uh, moderators uh, move forward with your program and then you'll let me know when it will be time for questions. Thank you. Wow, I am at loss of words. Again, let us give it up for the one and only 
Sister Calista Roy. Surely, grounding nursing research in a theoretical framework, such as the Roy's adaptation model, gives us a better understanding of human experiences with regards to health. Indeed, Jar. I love when Sister Calista Roy said there is unity between people and the environment while recognizing diversity of cultures, that each person has his and her own identity, that he or she is affected by both internal and external perceptions, and the significance of relationships as well. Most important, importantly, as nurses, we must not forget to always involve and go back to the very heart of our profession, the nursing process. Now, we will be hearing insights from our D reactors. Our participants watching through our FB or Facebook live stream can also share their reactions on the comment section. So let us start off with our first reactor. It is my privilege to call on Honorable Merli L. Salvani, PhD RN, Professional Regulation Commission, Board of Nursing member. Let us give her a warm round of virtual applause. Hello, a pleasant morning to everyone. And my greetings of peace and good health to everybody who are with us in this virtual platform. My fellow nurses, fellow nursing leaders, and of course, our nursing students, our future nurses all over the country, the Philippines, and in every corner of the world. Okay, first, I would like to say good morning to Sister Calista Roy. And of course, very nice to see you virtually, Sister, through this platform. I also would like to say welcome to the three other, two other nursing theorists, Dr. Schoenhofer and Dr. Boyken. And of course, all other nurses who are here. Good morning. So my reaction, <clears throat> My reaction to the theory, the Roy's adaptation model of Sister Calista Roy will be anchored on the qualities or characteristics of a good theory, which are testable, simple, replicable, and stable. First, testable. Now we all know for the past decades, the Roy adaptations model have been very widely utilized and very relevant for the practice of nursing in the areas of nursing practice, nursing research, nursing education, or even in the communities. Numerous studies or researches and scientific experiments have been done to support the theory of Sister Calista Roy. So very testable indeed. The next is replicable. In many others have replicated the adaptation model of Sister Calista Roy. The third is simple, very simple to understand. Although it is composed, the model has, uh, is composed or has five essential elements, which include adaptation, the person, health, goals of nursing, and the environment. This five components or essentials of the model is clearly defined and described. So simple to understand, therefore, okay? Also in this model, the modes of adaptation are further broken down into physiologic and psychological needs. Indeed, a dry adaptation model identifies people as adaptive systems in a holistic manner. Therefore, this model clearly mandates that every nurse should plan the nursing care to each of the patients, which should be unique and help, which should be unique to each of the client and help every client to achieve adaptation. Also, another, another characteristic of this theory is that it is stable. As we all know, healthcare and nursing keeps on evolving, especially now in this time of the pandemic. We live in the era of uncertainty and unprecedented time. So therefore, in the midst of uncertainties, the Roy's adaptation model remains stable. Why? In every situation where the patient is in, including us healthcare workers, nurses, we need to have this adaptive capacity. 
in order to cope and develop our resiliency in order to thrive in the midst of this COVID-19 pandemic where there is a lot of uncertainties. So moving forward to the new normal, therefore, this adaptation model is a very relevant and useful. Okay. And of course, okay, in terms of research, the model serves indeed as a very good framework in understanding every human phenomenon that is investigated, whether it is in health and illness within the healthcare system. So therefore, for me personally, my recommendations is that even we are in the midst of this pandemic, we know for a fact, the pandemic is not yet over. A Roy adaptation model remains as one of the nursing theory, the grand nursing theory that is relevant to nursing practice as well as to research. In other words, it is very important that even in the midst of uncertainty, we should base our practice in a theory-based nursing practice as well as with our nursing research. We need to make use, especially if our studies or researches is on the phenomenon of adaptation. This model indeed could help us understand fully the human phenomenon, okay, in health and illness, okay, the phenomenon of adaptation. So again, cheers to Sister Calista Roy. And of course, I would like to give my congratulations to the College of Nursing of the University of St. LaSalle, as well as the Center of Research and Engagement of this university. To all of you, buhay and congratulations. Thank you very much, Dr. Salvani and mabuhay. Now, at this point, may we hear from Mr. Anton Joseph Nasis Valencia, a USLS Level 3 Nursing Research 2 student, our secondary actor. A round of virtual applause, please. Um, good day, Sister Roy, my esteemed co-reactors and members of the panel, and to everyone who joined us in this momentous event. Since I started my journey in nursing school, I have been introduced and accustomed to several theories in nursing, which evidently helped me in understanding nursing concepts related to our future profession. As a nursing research two student from USLS Bacolod, I can attest to the importance and utility of this theory, along with other nursing theories formulated by our brilliant nursing theories. Some of them are here with us today. As a matter of fact, my group adopted the theory of Sister Roy in the nursing research we are currently working on, entitled The Level of Job Satisfaction Among Nurses Who Shifted to Other Careers, a pilot study aiming towards creating a foundation of knowledge that may lead to new approaches in dealing with many overwhelming nursing related issues that are timely and relevant in our country, the Philippines. Thus, being here today makes me elated and blessed to be able to learn more from the one and only Sister Roy. I was inspired by the idea that this um, Roy adaptation model theory was inspired from the very idea of Sister Roy way back then that um, which he mentioned, the goal of nursing was to promote adaptation. In fact, as she, um, a sister defined in her theory, adaptation is the process and outcome whereby the thinking and feeling person uses conscious awareness and choice to create human and environmental integration. Um, hence proving the idea which uh, was later on expounded into the theory Roy adaptation model. From this talk, I was able to take several insights that will help me in my clinical practice and academic engagements. So here are um, some of my takeaways. Uh, this is not um, every um, learnings that I was able to gather from this talk, but this is the highlighted ones. So I was able to understand um, further the specific implications of the different modes of responses to stimuli manifested in the individual or group's um, behavior. These implications allows, um, allow nurses to integrate the understanding of these responses to the nursing care plans. I was also able to take note this particular notable theory enable, enables development of knowledge in nursing that promote adaptation to changes and improvements on the, on the different approaches of nursing, giving way to more theories and evidence-based practices. 
I am beyond grateful to everyone who made this event happen. And Sister Roy, on behalf of my fellow BS nursing students from all over the world, thank you for blessing us with your presence today and for letting us partake from your paramount fountain of knowledge. Well, my sincerest gratitude to Mr. Nessis Valencia for sharing his thoughts. Now we will proceed to our next reactor as she gives her insight on the topic. We welcome another highly respected individual in our nursing field, the proponent of the theory of nursing as caring. Let us give a warm round of virtual applause to Dr. Sabrina Schoenhofer. Thank you, everyone. And thank you, first of all, Dr. Shaila, for the beautiful invitation to not only come and hear Sister Callista, but then to actually be able to participate in the dialogue. Uh, it's daunting, the, <laughs> the idea that I would have anything of, uh, you know, of interest to respond to Sister Callista's work, but for one thing, I just wanna say on a personal note, I'm thrilled to be in her presence tonight. It's night in the US, um, even if it's a virtual presence. And I, I can still see it in my mind in 1991 when Dr. Boykin and I presented our theory for the first time in Miami, Florida. And Dr. Roy so graciously came up and congratulated us and encouraged us to continue working. So I thank you for that encouragement. It still, it still burns brightly. In listening to uh, your comments today, Dr. Roy, I was most struck by, I guess, two ideas. One is uh, verativity, that's a beautiful concept. And I wrote down, um, the rootedness of all knowledge begins as one, and verativity affirms a common purposefulness of human existence, a unity of purpose. And then the um, assumption, the integration of human and environment meanings result in adaptation. I guess I'm interested in um, a couple of philosophical ideas there. And I didn't, I hope we have a chance to dialogue about this. And I guess this will be up to Dr. Shyla. But, you know, um, what are your ideas about what is that common purpose? And my other thing that I'm pondering, and I think you gave us a hint today when did you introduce as kind of a major theme, the idea of meaning into your work? Uh, when I started studying nursing theory way back in, um, way back, <laughs> uh, decades ago, the idea of meaning didn't come through, but perhaps the meaning concept was elaborated in your work based on Danny Willis's um, synthesis of uh, the purpose of nursing. So those were the two ideas that, um, that intrigued me and I'm going to continue to look into. And thank you all, thank everyone for this beautiful opportunity. And um, I'll wait to, uh, for further dialogue. My deepest thanks, Dr. Sean Hofer. Again, let us put our hands together for all our reactors for sharing with us their valuable insights. At this juncture, may we call on Brother Normandi Duhonko, FSC, DTAL, Vice Chancellor for Mission and Development, for his message of thanks. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us in our activity today. Thank you all for attending and listening patiently and participating actively in today's seminar. I would like to especially thank Dr. Kalista Roy for sharing her time, talent, and expertise 
in, in discussing these new issues regarding nursing. I am sure our participants have learned much from you. I would also like to thank Dr. Sean Hoffer for generously reacting to today's talk. I'm sure it is also a source of much thought and inspiration for our participants. Learning is a privilege, it is a gift, and it is something that we share to others. May those who have listened to you today bring something home and share it with those they work with and those that they serve. God bless us all. Thank you so much, brother. At this point in time, we will be opening our question and answer portion. We will be allotting 15 minutes for this section, and you may use the question and answer box for your inquiries. Worry not for your unanswered questions will be collated by our organizers and be forwarded to our guest speakers. Answers will then be posted on our USLS College of Nursing FB page. And now we welcome Dr. Sean Hofer and Dr. Boykin for their questions. And do you want to go ahead since I've already had an opportunity to, to uh, express my thoughts? Sure. Well, I'd like to just begin by saying, um, Sister Callista, how wonderful it is to be with you. I have so long admired your unending commitment, passion, vision, um, just total dedication to nursing and the wonderful um, accomplishments that's made for practice and for research. So I am very grateful and I thank you for all that you have done for our wonderful profession. Thank you. I guess um, a comment that I have, I would just be curious what you think about this. Um, the concept, this is, this is just an understanding, so I don't know if this would make sense to you, but that the concept of ver verativity, to me, when I read that and thought about that, I think it's a really important idea. And for me, from my frame of reference, it is the affirmation that caring is the groundedness, the rootedness of our humanness. So living, caring, growing in caring, um, coming to know other as caring is the unity of purpose. Um, and of course, as you say, and, and as you gave examples, I can understand, and I see how this notion is lived out with individuals, with groups, with systems. But I wondered, does that make sense? Or how do you, what do you think about that idea? Of course, I'm coming from nursing as caring perspective, but I do love that term. I agree, that would be one way of expressing it. And, uh, it uh, Savina had asked, what is this common uh, purposefulness? And uh, be, uh, I, it, I go back to uh, my belief system to describe it, but people can describe it because uh, I think all uh, through time and through cultures, we have believed in something beyond ourselves. And uh, so my idea is that we are created by God and returning to God. And the uh, becoming fully human during our time and caring would be a huge part of that, uh, I do believe. So I think they, they, they do fit together uh, that, uh, and uh, because if you just go, you know, to, to love God and love our neighbor is what we're about. And so therefore, uh, I think that all of the knowledge about caring uh, is hugely important, nursing knowledge and knowledge for people overall. Uh, I really, I, I agree with that. 
I'm not sure if that answers what uh, your question uh, and the one that was posed earlier. Is that helpful? Yes, thank you. Thank you. And now, before we read the questions on the question and answer back box, I will read first the realization of Dr. Loxin. The RAM or the Roy adaptation model is one of the theories of nursing grounding practice on biomedical knowledge and its relevance most realized in hospital nursing. This is very important in understanding the many paths of nursing practice in the current and future world. Thank you so much, Dr. Loxin. And now we will proceed to the reading of the questions from our audience. So our first question, how has Roy's adaptation model been used in research? Well, I'm very happy to say that it's been used in every uh, uh, clinical field. Uh, and the way it's looked at is uh, uh, how do people uh, use uh, their, how does their self-concept change in illness and how does nursing then help them reshape that? Uh, uh, that's one uh, uh, area that gets a lot of attention. Uh, another whole area that has developed and uh, early on I worked with Marjorie Dobratz who developed uh, the uh, a lot of work with dying patients, and uh, she developed you know middle range theories related to this because uh, that was an area uh, that was of interest to her, but one also in which nurses are hugely important. You know, medicine has done what they can; they step out; <laughs> they're not, they're not interested in that. But helping people live and be fully human and at peace with that transition uh, from life to death, I think it's just a huge area that can be, that has been researched and can be more. The other thing that has been a lot, uh, a lot is uh, intensive care, because again, that's an area where nursing uh, has a, such a major, major role. Uh, and, uh, even uh, there have been a number of studies where they have studied implementation projects. So what was it like before the Roy model was introduced and what was it like afterwards? And, uh, you know, I, uh, I'm amazed, for example, after nursing care plans were introduced on units and uh, this investigator, nurse researcher went through the unit and she found there was a written out care plan on one out of 25 patients. So then they introduced the Roy model and the number increased exponentially. In other words, if the nurse is helped to understand what they're looking at and given the language to describe it, they will do this. And the other thing that I noticed in visiting a unit that had implemented the model was nurses consulting nurses. You know, I've just interviewed this patient. I think the major issue is this, you know, I think, and do you agree with that? So I think, you know, because nurses are expert in nursing. And if we have common understanding of that, we can help each other out. So uh, it, I think that's enough on, on what are some possibilities for research. Okay. Thank you so much for your answer, Sister Calista Roy. Um, next, we will enter entertain another question. So can you read it for us, Jarek? The question reads like this, Sister, I am amazed with your adaptation theory, especially the significance of the concepts, focal, contextual, and residual stimuli. But I am curious how Helson's theory influenced your model. Thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to meet the living legend. 
Uh, that's a great question. Yes, I like to tell that story. And I had to keep myself back from telling stories or we would have been here all night before I finished. But what happened was, I was thinking about, uh, you know, the whole idea of adaptation, and I went into our library at Mount St. Mary's University, which was not, it's not a huge library. I had been at the library at UCLA many times, but here there was an old car card catalog. That's what we have. You know what I did? I looked up a adaptation, and there was a brand new book, Helson Adaptation Theory, <laughs> but he was dealing with it from uh, physiologic psychology. So he would say, for example, that if I pick up a lead weight of a certain number of grams, it, my response, if it was heavy or light, depended not only on how many grams it was, but on the one I had picked up just before it, if it was heavy or lighter, do you see? So therefore, he got this idea that you had to classify stimuli, and that's where he got focal, the one I'm picking up, contextual, the one I already picked up, and then residual, because he said sometimes he could, there were things that didn't quite match, might have something to do with the person's background. Maybe they're a weightlifter on the weekends or something. So focal, contextual, residual were hugely important in figuring out the person's behavior. not It's not just what's happening right now, but it's, it's everything around it too as well. So that those became really useful. So thank you for asking that question. Thank you very much, sister. So another one from the audience, it says, you have mentioned that the RAM or the ROI adaptation model may be used for how persons can adjust to a group. I just want to ask if this model is very much appropriate as a framework to study about how nursing professionals work together as a group or a team. And if it is, may you give an example of it? Thank you. Yes, actually, uh, because uh, adaptive systems are individuals and groups. So there are ways to look at the group and it has been used uh, uh, to look at nurses and uh, who are functioning uh, uh, together or not. And, and, and as I said, some of these are before and after types of uh, studies where you look at it before they're giving a nursing theory or model and then after. Because again, as I said, a lot, you know, it depends. We all know what nursing is, but we need to be able to articulate it, to have a way to describe it. And, and theoretical models are just different ways of describing it. Uh, someone asked earlier uh, something about uh, uh, Danny Willis. Uh, and uh, uh, Danny Willis, uh, uh, we were on the same faculty together. So we worked together a lot. And yes, many of his ideas he was looking at the nursing literature broadly, and that's where he came up with uh, meaning uh, then and called it that. It doesn't mean that it didn't, he, he got it from the literature and, and from all the theoretical literature, but it was very useful to have him pull together all these ideas and uh, uh, and everything I've written since then has been more clear because of that. So, uh, yeah. Thank you so much, Sister Kalister Roy. We will be having the last question. And as mentioned earlier, we will be collating the remaining questions and have them forwarded to Sister Kalister Roy after the webinar. Thank you for your understanding. So the question reads, what has changed in the model in recent years? And how has RAM or Roy Adaptation model influenced your spiritual worldview? I think it, uh, two things, uh, uh, what it is uh, developing uh, the philosophical assumptions was a major move forward to actually articulate that. It wasn't that they weren't there, 
but I knew, uh, I will tell you that uh, I, I had an interesting experience. I actually was getting an honorary doctorate with the U.S. Surgeon General C. Everett Koop. He, he, he was the one who put the notice on cigarettes that, that cause cancer. So that's what he was famous for, but he was a really good person. And he said that when we use, uh, when we look at uh, humanism, he thought that physicians and others were doing it from a very secular perspective. So I said, then there's got to be a different perspective that's not that. So what is it? And that's how I began to develop some of these ideas to say, no, we're talking about uh, the, uh, again, it goes back to my belief system, people are created for good and to develop themselves fully and then to return, uh, in my case, uh, to heaven. And uh, it's what I believe. Uh, now, the other part of that that you, uh, 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 the question, I, I don't want to miss this. There was a second part of it that was important. Uh, so, how has Ram influenced your oh, spiritual? Okay, that, that I remember now. Yeah, no, no, no. It's the opposite. My spirituality has affected my work, and uh, which doesn't mean that sometimes having having done it and articulated it, that it doesn't also penetrate deeper, you know, into my reality. It does. However, mostly I think it's my belief systems have affected. Uh, my work. Thank you. Good question. So that was an enlightening exchange of insights. And I do hope that our dear viewers have also taken note of those valuable information. Now, we will proceed to the giving of certificates to our speaker and reactors. So the certificate reads, University of St. LaSalle, College of Nursing, and Center for Research and Engagement. This certificate of appreciation is hereby given to Sister Calista Roy for her invaluable service as resource speaker during the USLS College of Nursing virtual research webinar with the theme, the Roy Adaptation Model and Uses in Nursing Practice and Research. Given this 28th day of February, 2022, via Zoom at the University of St. LaSalle, Bacolod. Signed, Shaila M. Trahera, PhD, RN, LPT, Director, Center for Linkages and International Affairs. Dean B. Domingo, RNMN, Dean, College of Nursing, and last but not the least, Romeo Terwell, PhD, Assistant Vice Chancellor for Research and Engagement. Again, let's give a hand to Sister Calista Roy. Thank you very much. Thank you. I will treasure this certificate. Thank you, Sister. Now, to give the certificates to our dear reactors, the certificate reads USLS, College of Nursing, Center for Research and Engagement, this certificate is of appreciation is hereby given to Honorable Merli L. Salvani, PhD RN, Mr. Anton Joseph Nasis Valencia, and Dr. Sabina Sean Hofer for their invaluable ser service as reactors in this webinar during the USLS College of Nursing virtual research webinar with the theme of the Roy Adaptation Model and Uses in Nursing Practice and Research. Given this 28th day of February, 2022, via Zoom at the University of St. LaSalle, Bacolod. Signed by Ms. Shaila M. Trajera, PhD, RN, LPD, Director, Center for Linkages and International Affairs, Dean B. Domingo, RNMN, Dean of the USLS College of Nursing, and Romeo Teruel, PhD, Assistant Vice Chancellor for Research and Engagement. Let us give a round of virtual applause to our honored speakers, speaker and reactors. Thank at this you, point, University of St. Lazar. Thank you to thank our you. dear thank guests. You. 
Thank, Thank you. you very much. So at this point, may we request all panelists to kindly turn on your cameras for a quick photo session. Thank you. So our tech team is already on the go for the photo off. Okay, three, two, one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Before we proceed, may we remind the participants to remain in the Zoom meeting as we will be posting a link for the evaluation forms, which you are required to answer so that you may receive your e-certificates. As the end of the webinar draws near, may we hear from the academic coordinator of the graduate programs for nursing, Dr. Tony Ann Lachica, for her closing remarks. Good noon to all, especially to our esteemed speaker, Sister Calista Roy, and other renowned nursing theories, Dr. Rosanna Lapsin, Dr. Sabina Schoenhofer, Dr. Anne Boykin, Association of Deans of Philippine Colleges of Nursing, and Board of Nursing members present today. Confidently, but humbly, I can say that everyone in this virtual room and those who are joining through our Facebook Live are able to learn profoundly the popular nursing theory straight from the theorist herself. A once in a lifetime chance, a once in a lifetime occasion, which happened and forever is carved in our hearts during our new normal travel. That despite the adversities and challenges we face day by day, we have overcome and reason above all this. We are still blessed with learning opportunities like this, where we could improve ourselves professionally and as a whole. As the famous philosophical statement by Sister Calista Roy says, do not underestimate the power of a person to cope. He may be dependent now, but deep within him, but deep within him lies the energy to adapt. Today, our esteemed speaker highlighted the central domain of her theory, which is very timely to our pandemic conditions and experiences in the nursing academe, practice, and research. We are able to construe that nurses are capacitated to enhance environment interactions to promote positive and effective coping from the patients. To our illustrious speaker, Sister Calista Roy, it was a great chance to listen to your words and learn so much from them. We take this time to sincerely thank you on behalf of the University of St. LaSalle administrators headed by Brother Joaquin Severino Martinez, FSC, University President and Chancellor, Brother Normando C. Duhonco, FSC, Vice Chancellor for Mission and Development, Dr. Annabel Balor, Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs, Dr. Romeo Terwell, Assistant Vice Chancellor for Research and Engagement, Mr. Dean Domingo, Dean College of Nursing, and Dr. Shaila Trajera, Center for Linkages and International Affairs Director and College of Nursing Research Coordinator for taking time to provide us with such valuable information. This will immensely help us in the development of our teaching and learning materials, research studies, and execution of nursing skills. The event today is well attended, that we have reached a little over 3,000 participants, which only shows that nurses are insatiable when it comes to continuous learning. We have attendees straight from the United States, 
Middle East, Europe, and other sectors of the globe. We would like to appreciate your virtual presence this morning and for actively participating in this webinar. I hope that you were enlightened and inspired more to continue your vocation and mission as frontliners. To our reactors, Honorable Dr. Merle Salvani, Professional Regulatory Commission Board of Nursing Member, Dr. Sabina Sean Hoover, Nursing Furies of the Nursing as Caring Fury, Mr. Anton Joseph Nasis Valencia, Nursing Research 2 Level 3 student. Thank you for your deep and powerful summary of insights and wisdom. To the webinar facilitators and organizers, Dr. Shaila Trajera, Sir O.J. Jimenez, Sir Vincent Solidum, and other nursing research facilitators. Thank you for all the hard works and late evening meetings to make this event a success. Our thanks are extended to the Center for Research and Engagement Office and College of Nursing, University of St. Lasal, faculty, staff, and students for your unwavering support and cooperation. To God Almighty, our true source of wisdom and strength to endure and surpass all these uncertainties in life and for guiding us all throughout the session. Again, we thank each and everyone for the accomplishment of this event. To end, I wish everyone a fruitful year ahead. Let's continue to adopt in this ever-changing and most challenging times of our lives. Never forget, life is what it is. Accept it, learn from it, and grow from it. It doesn't matter what you have done, what, but what truly really matters is what you do from here. Thank you and a pleasant morning to all. Animo Lasal. Thank you for that, Doc Tony. As with life, there is a season for everything. And now we have reached the end of our activity. We always hate goodbyes. But I do hope that all of us will leave this webinar with enlightened minds and bring with us inspiration to apply what we have learned in whatever field of nursing we are in. Indeed, Jar. But before we part ways, we would also like to take this opportunity to commend again and thank the great minds and hands behind this webinar, Dr. Shaila Trajera, Mr. O.J. Jimenez, Mr. Vincent Solidum, Ms. Rica Flores, Ms. Sire Salas, and Mr. Carl Von Taokta, as they made this event possible. And to all of you, of course, thank you very much. And we leave you with this thought to ponder. Change is the law of life. And those who look only at the past and present are certain to miss the future. The greatest discovery of all time is that a person can change his future by merely changing his attitude. We may not have the power to control all the things around us, but the ability to adjust and adapt amidst the changing circumstances of life is ours to develop. And again, I am Jarek Aloro. And I am Isabel Viaje. This has been the Roy Adaptation Model and Uses in Nursing Practice and Research. A pleasant morning to everyone. Stay safe and mabuhay tayong lahat. Animo! Lasal! Let us now partake in the singing of the Lasallian Alma Mater song. Hail, hail, Alma Mater, hail to the Lasall. We'll hold your banner high and bright, a shield of green and white. We'll fight to keep your glory bright, and never shall we fail. Hail to thee, our alma mater, hail, 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 alma mater.
water. Hail to the soul. We'll hold your banner high and bright, a shield of green and white. We'll fight to keep your glory bright, and never shall we fail. Hail to the our alma mater. Hail, hail, hail. Hail to the our alma mater. Hail, hail, hail. So thank you very much, everyone. Again, may we remind everyone again to kindly answer the evaluation form by scanning the QR code posted on the screen or if there's none by opening the link provided on our chat box. Thank you and again, good day to everyone. Thank you so much, Mr. Dr. Sabina, Dr. Ann, and um, Dr. Rosano. We are so glad to have you with us. And hopefully we can have more encounters with you, engagement with you. Salamat po. God bless you all. Thank you.